With the same name and surname, he has become the cousin of Morong Fu in the Tianlong Babu. Faced with his own martial arts being exhausted and the imminent collapse of the martial arts world, how can Morong Fu break through? As a time traveler, should we choose to follow the path of the protagonist, leaving him with no way to go, or take a different path and become ourselves? Thirty years ago, the disputes, grudges and grudges of several generations, the turmoil in the martial arts world, and the bloodshed and tears of the common people under the cover of dynastic hegemony. Let's see how Murong Fu transformed from the narrow dot minded strongest resentment into a generation of male leaders, stirring up trouble in the chaotic world of rivers and temples. Novel Keywords Regenerating Murong Fu This time I am the protagonist with no pop ups, regenerating Murong Fu. This time I am the protagonist. Download the complete TXT collection, regenerating Murong Fu. This time I am the protagonist. Read the latest chapter. Chapter 1. The Most Powerful Grudge. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1. The Most Powerful Grudge Murong Fu knelt alone by the creek, his face covered in dust, his hair scattered, and he was in a miserable state. In the late winter season, when it was warm and cold, the stream water was icy and piercing. However, Murong Fu didn't care about these things and plunged into the stream water, trying to alleviate the piercing sensation in his brain. The tidal wave of information repeatedly impacts the fragile nerves, and the next second the will will collapse. The hottest topic in the martial arts world these days is undoubtedly the famous Murong young master who has gone crazy. Although several capable retainers and maids have tried their best to block the news, how can they stop the rumors in the martial arts world? For a while, the news of Murong Gongzi, the only son of the Murong aristocratic family, becoming obsessed with martial arts practice spread throughout the country, with different opinions. In the martial arts world, there are those who feel regretful, those who gloat at, and even those with ulterior motives secretly have thoughts. The martial arts world of the Central Plains suddenly surges with undercurrents. Only Murong Fu himself knew what was going on. It's simple, this Murong Fu is not that Murong Fu. For his own name, Murong Fu loved and hated it from a young age. On the one hand, Murong, a compound surname, was born with a strong personality. On the other hand, even if he was called Murong Fu Gui, he happened to have the same name as the narrow dot minded and narrow dot minded Nan Murong in Jin Yang's masterpiece, The Eight Heavenly Dragons. A few days ago, Murong Fu and his friends went on a trip. It's the scorching summer in the south, my friend suggested drifting in the afternoon. Everything went smoothly at the beginning. Until passing by a steep riverbank, the water splashed away the jade pendant on Murong Fu's neck. Subconsciously, Murong Fu reached out to pick it up, but was then thrown out of the kayak and there was no more. That is to say, Murong Fu traveled to Murong Fu, who had the same name and surname as himself. No matter how many times the TV drama was filmed, this young master Murong could not escape the fate of betrayal and madness. He was determined to restore his country and faced only a joke. He always felt unlucky to be named after such a character, and Murong Fu didn't know what his parents were thinking when naming him. The strongest complaint in the Jin Yong series. Unfortunately, it seems that I am the one who harbors this great resentment. There seemed to be a lump of charcoal fire in his chest, and Murong Fu knew that it was due to the chaos of his true energy, which had accumulated in the Dantian. He also vaguely guessed that it should be related to his passing through. Wow, Morong Fu felt anxious in his heart and immediately spat out a large mouthful of blood. He then fell on the stream, unaware of everything. Wake up again, it's already late at night. Morong Fu lay in bed, feeling thirsty and about to scream. A crisp girl's delicate voice came into her ear and she said, Young master, you're awake. Go and inform Brother Bao and Brother Fong. Bring the prepared tea and hot water quickly. Abi. Murong Fu called out softly. Upon hearing this, the girl was overjoyed and quickly rushed to Murong Fu's bed, saying, Young master, are you feeling better? 
you have vomited a lot of blood, and Abi thought, thinking. The girl's thought was stuck in her throat, unable to come out for a long time. Her nose was sore, and tears silently rolled down her jade cheeks. Looking at the beautiful woman in front of her, who was crying with tears in her eyes, Morong Fu couldn't help but feel pity. He reached out and gently brushed her hair, saying softly, I'm making you worry, Abi. Abi was crying for herself, listening to her young master's soft words of comfort, both unexpected and touching. Surprisingly, the young master of his own family has been dedicated to reviving his homeland since childhood, and only diligently practices martial arts and military strategy every day. What we talk about on weekdays is all about family and national affairs, and when it comes to the concerns of these young children, they are completely careless. Miss Wong from the Wong family is so infatuated with her own young master that even servants can tell at a glance. However, her own young master has never spoken a gentle word, let alone treated servants. This gentle sentence sounded like a heavenly melody to Abby's ear, and she felt the fatigue of her sleepless days dissipate in a flash. Suddenly realizing that his young master was caressing his hair with his big hands, he felt very shy. Although I am the young master's personal maid, this behavior is still too intimate for women in this era. At present, two red clouds fly on my jade face and I shyly bow my head. Seeing the strange behavior of the beautiful woman beside him, Morong Fu also realized that his behavior was not right, so he withdrew his hand. Blush, and then he wanted to find some topics to ease the awkward atmosphere. However, his predecessor was also a social phobia, and there was no place to go, which was nothing but a dialogue of, I have been in a coma for several days, and three days. Just as I was unsure what to do, a shout came from outside the door, Mr. Bao, Mr. Fong and his two grandfathers have arrived. Please come in quickly. Murong Fu's eyes lit up and he shouted loudly. The servant who had been guarding the door for a long time opened the door, and two middle-aged men immediately entered. One of them was dressed in strong attire, dressed as a warrior, with two sharp sword eyebrows and a pair of eyes shining brightly. He was the fourth of the four courtiers of the Murong clan, known as the Wind of Jiangnan. The other person, on the other hand, had a round face, two mustaches, and appeared smooth and worldly wise. He dressed half like a scholar and half like a warrior, and it was precisely the Bao Sanyi who spoke of neither two nor two that was different. Are you feeling better on the young master? Bao Butong said first after seeing the gift. Thank you, Brother Bao. It's not a big deal now, said Murong Fuk. Young master deliberately conceals, can't you believe the two of us? The Feng Bao family has been Murong's vassals for generations, and the four of them will be on the same wavelength and share weal and woe with the Murong family. Why do you need to be like this, young master? Fengbo evil shouted loudly, disregarding Bao Bu's strong expression around him. Murong Fu was taken aback for a moment, then realized that his politeness was a bit excessive. He immediately instructed little Abi, Abi, take the people out. It's a great reward. Everyone has been working hard these past few days. After waiting for a group of servants to step down, Murong Fu said again, your loyalty naturally needs no doubt. Just now, there were many people with mixed eyes, so it's like this ear. Don't blame the two brothers. Upon hearing this, Fenwa Evil quickly knelt down and saluted, saying, Fenwa Evil collided with the young master, and it is a crime worthy of death. I hope the young master will punish him. Murong Fu quickly lifted him up and comforted him with kind words. After a few more idle words, the three people in the room all looked stern when it came to business. Just listening to Bao, he said. During this period, the young master was ill, and there were many messages in the Jianghu. Some forces who had made friends with the Murong family were ready to move, and even some of the Murong family's original subordinate sects, the Zongmen were quite active. The people we sent to the the Taihu Lake Jingjiao Society last month should have returned three days ago, but there has been no news so far. This month, a tenant sent by a farm was also robbed, 
and the murderer may have been instructed by the Penglai sect in Shandong. After a series of words, it's just some bad news. Although the Morong family has been passed down for many years and has a great business, the loss of a few coins and grains is not a big deal. However, the current dark tide is surging, and there is a strong trend of mountains and rain approaching and the wind filling the building. Any slight mistake will lead to the end of the family's downfall. Although the original Morong Fu went crazy in the end, at least he still had a body full of martial arts. At present, his true chi was chaotic, and he couldn't use any of his internal power. As for the martial arts moves that were originally collected from a hundred schools, they couldn't be used at all with the disappearance of the original owner's consciousness. In short, I am no different from a useless person now. It's really the beginning of hell, Morong Fu murmured to himself. Young master, what are you talking about? Feng Bo saw his own young master muttering some incomprehensible words, and couldn't help but inquire. However, Bao Bu raised his hand to stop him, only saying that his own young master had made a mistake while practicing, feeling dejected. The young master is of noble physique, and according to Bao's different opinions, he should go to visit Shueshini, who is known as the enemy of the Yen King in the martial arts world, for treatment. The Shui divine doctor mentioned by Bao Bu Bu is naturally Shui Muhua, the world's first physician. It is said that as long as the patient has a breath, they can be saved alive. In the original work, Ah Zhu was injured by the fist power of a Shaolin monk and was saved by this divine doctor. However, Murong Fu knew that he was not injured at all, beyond the reach of Qi Huang's technique. There are only two areas in my current situation, perhaps there can be a solution. So he shook his head slowly and said, My injury this time is not an ordinary one. It was caused by the chaos of internal power caused by practicing martial arts and becoming demonic, which is beyond the reach of medicinal stones. Upon hearing this, both of the two retainers looked gloomy. The storm trembled and they asked, Is there nothing we can do? Bao Butong pondered for a moment, twirling his eight-character beard and saying, No, 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 according to Bao Bu, there are at least two places in the world where there may be a solution to the young master's illness. Murong Fu smiled and looked at his two major retainers, waiting for Bao Budong's next words. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Montua Mountain Manor Tour You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Montua Mountain Manor Tour Bao Budong was about to speak when he saw his own young master looking at him with a smile on his face. He was shocked and quickly apologized, young master is exceptionally intelligent. I believe he already has an idea in his heart. Bao Butong shouldn't be talking nonsense. Looking at Bao Bu, who was anxious and uneasy in front of him, Morong Fu sighed inwardly, it is said that the original owner, Morong Fu, could not achieve great success. As expected, Bao Bu is such a person who takes pleasure in refuting others and always talks about, no, no. In front of Morong Fu, he is still trembling and prone to blame which shows how narrow dot minded and stubborn Morong Fu is. Morong Fu quickly waved his hand, indicating that Bao was different. Brother Bao, why did he say this? What is his opinion, but it's okay to say it. Yes. After giving another salute, Bao Butong stood up from the ground and twisted his eight-character beard, saying, the young master has a broad mind and is diligent in learning and training. Unfortunately, he has suffered this calamity. Since the young master said that even the Shui divine doctor cannot cure the young master, there are only two possible ways to cure him in today's world. One is to go to Shaolin and request the high dot level monks of the Xuanzi generation to use their profound internal strength to help the young master clear his tendons and veins. The second is to go to Dali. Although Bao Butong has low martial arts skills, he has long heard of the legendary skill, One Yang Finger, of the Duan family in Dali. The high dot ranking monks of Tianlong Temple have profound martial arts skills. If they are willing to help, it would be even better. What do you think, young master, what Brother Bao said really resonates with me, so I kindly ask Brother Fong, Brother Si, and Ah Zhu and Ah Bai to prepare together. 
Three days later, we will set off for Dali together. Murong Fu arranged it this way. Funbua Evil and Bao Bu were taken aback for a moment. They had never expected that Murong Fu would make such a choice, but after all, their own young master was the master. Feng Bao and Bao regarded themselves as Murong's retainers and naturally adhered to the etiquette of monarchs and ministers. Therefore, they all responded with a, yes, and respectfully retreated. After the two of them walked away, Murong closed the door and sat alone in the room, sighing silently. He didn't know that Feng Bao and his wife wanted Murong Fu to go north to Shaolin. As Shaolin Temple is the leading place in the martial arts world, all the eminent monks are merciful and will certainly help. Secondly, the Murong family has a sensitive identity. As a remnant of the previous dynasty, if they get too close to a foreign country, it is inevitable that someone with ulterior motives will use this as an excuse. The Murong family has always had good relations with Shaolin, but has little connection with Dali. Abandoning Shaolin to seek Dali is actually seeking distance. However, as someone who traveled through time, Murong Fu knew that thirty years ago, his cheap father Murong Bo, for his own selfish desires, deceived the martial arts tycoon at that time, the leading elder brother, who was also the abbot of Shaolin at that time, Master Xuanzi, and led to the Yenmen Pass tragedy. Murong Bo was also forced to feign death to avoid being held accountable. Such a deep hatred is here, and my cheap son dare not come to his door. He places his hope on a vague phrase. A monk is compassionate. Thinking of his cheap father, Murong Bo, also gave Murong Fu a headache. If we follow the original work, our father should have already started to cause trouble in the martial arts world by now, using the unique skill of the Murong family to repay the enemy with the same way to provoke a bunch of enemies for Murong Fu. Thinking that his martial arts skills were exhausted now, and there was still a ghost behind him that could cause trouble at any time, as well as a bunch of enemies, Morong Fu felt as if the entire room was filled with ghostly energy, which made him shudder. There is another reason for choosing to go to Dali, which is that Morong Fu hopes to explore the Longhuan blessed land hidden in the infinite mountains. If he can obtain the martial arts of the Xiaoyao sect, Biming Divine Skill, and Lingbo Micro Step, hidden in it, wouldn't he just climb to the sky step by step? Thinking of this, I couldn't help feeling excited. A mouthful of fresh blood rushed up to my throat, and I quickly adjusted my breathing to lower my blood pressure. It's better not to think about the protagonist's fate. Whether or not he can save his life is a matter of two words. There was nothing to say overnight. The next day. The next day, Morong Fu set off to visit his widowed aunt, Mrs. Wang, and of course, his cousin, Wang Yuyen who was known as the immortal sister by Duan Yu. Meet my aunt. Murong Fu bowed respectfully to the bottom. The beautiful woman in front of me is not confused about her age, but she is very well maintained. She looks just in her thirties and is full of charm. However, she looks like an iceberg beauty. She just said to Murong Fu calmly, Excuse me, Murong young master, Today you have this elegant pleasure to visit my small mandala villa. What can I do for guidance? Listening to this sarcastic remark, Morong Fu chuckled bitterly to himself. Originally, the Morong and Wang families were united and relied on each other, and even rebellions could be truthfully reported, indicating a close relationship. However, my aunt and mother have always been at odds, and after Uncle Morong Fu passed away, the two families almost cut off communication. Outsiders only think that the two main mothers are at odds, and there is a secret to it. However, Murong Fu, the traveler, is aware of it. But now is not the time to worry about these things, let alone this Murong Fu is not the original owner. The trivial matters of the original owner's family are none of my own business. If this had been the case in the past, Murong Fu would have been polite and had enough etiquette before taking his leave. At this moment, Murong Fu is not the same foolish person as before. Immediately, with a slight smile, he said, I haven't seen you for months. My aunt's demeanor remains the same, and her wit doesn't diminish. She still likes to tease my nephew. 
I believe my aunt has heard about my nephew's recent events, and he has been greatly affected by these changes in the past few days. In a daze, it seems like he has been reborn for a lifetime. Thinking back on what he has done in the past, I feel a great sense of unease. Aunt, please don't argue with the reinstated official who has no father or mother and is wandering in the world. Aunt and Yuyan are the only relatives of Fu Guan in this world. My nephew apologizes to my aunt here after speaking, Murong Fu lifted the hem of his robe and knelt in front of Mrs. Wang, kowtowing heavily three times. He was well aware that the Murong family was in turmoil at this time. After Murong Bo passed away, the reputation of the Murong family in the martial arts world greatly diminished, to the extent that Murong Bo used the obvious inferior method of killing and making enemies everywhere. Now facing the upheaval of Murong Fu, various forces, both overt and covert, are eager to stir up. Not to mention the level of the martial arts world, the Murong family has been engaged in many covert and covert activities in recent years, including illegal salt and banditry, which are still minor matters. Some of these things are done in a coordinated and tacitly approved manner, while others are simply jumping around in minefields. The biggest impact of my so dot called madness this time was not losing my martial arts skills, but sending a very unfavorable signal to the outside world. That is the complete downfall of the Murong family. What happens when the stunt double is chopped off, but it's very clear. Once the enemies in the dark have figured out the weakness of the Murong family at this moment, they will surely surge in like sharks smelling blood, and the Murong family will be torn apart like a bloody whale. The Murong family has been in existence for 600 years until now, and it is said that they rely solely on fighting and killing in the martial arts world, even ghosts do not believe it. At the official level of management, Murong Fu was not qualified before. The previous pattern was a marriage alliance between the Murong and Wang families, with the two main mothers maintaining a harmonious but not harmonious situation, with eggs placed in two baskets. And Murong Bo was forced to feign death, and the death of Murong Fu's mother directly broke this situation. Although Murong Bo still actively participates under his pseudonym, his influence is not as great as before. After all, if you leave the palace without permission, the emperor is not the emperor anymore. Otherwise, what were the emperors who went on a tour and engaged in such a big battle in their past lives for? Do you really think people are stupid? However, the previous Murong Fu was only a martial arts practitioner and a conceited wanderer in the martial arts world. He had no knowledge of this worldly wisdom, only realizing that the two families had always been at odds and that he was too lazy to pay attention to it. As for his aunt, he often only showed superficial courtesy, completely unaware of how much wind and rain Mrs. Wang silently sheltered his Murong family after his parents passed away. So later on, Mrs. Wang didn't even allow her nephew to come knocking on the door, and this pillar of the Murong family's secret was on the verge of collapse. Fortunately, Mrs. Wang only has one daughter of her own, and Wang Yuyan has a deep affection for Murong Fu. Otherwise, with the other parties scheming and a slight manipulation, the Murong family would face the risk of being wiped out. At this critical moment, what is the importance of having a few dozen members of one's own family in terms of gold under one's knees? Murong Fu's move caught Mrs. Wang off guard, causing her to feel a bit flustered for a moment. However, her tone softened noticeably, what does it mean to be reinstated as an official? It's both a matter of bowing and apologizing, but it seems that my aunt is not. The middle-aged beautiful woman initially referred to Murong Fu as Murong Gongzi, with a resentful attitude, rejecting people from thousands of miles away. However, after receiving Murong Fu's heartfelt etiquette, she changed her title to Fu Guan. With a small change, the meaning behind it was quite different. At the moment when Murong Fu stood up, he breathed a sigh in his heart, secretly saying that his purpose of coming had finally been partially achieved. At present, the Murong family is facing internal and external troubles, with ups and downs. What is needed most at this time is a strong and reliable ally. As far as the Murong family is concerned, which faction is more friendly and influential than the Wang family? 
Murong Fu's visit this time is to conclude that the relationship between Mrs. Wang and the Murong family is not irreparable. From Mrs. Wang's reaction, Murong Fu's judgment is correct. Mrs. Wang is obviously arrogant and lacks a beloved daughter, which is why he was taken over by the old silver thief Duan Jingchen. It is probably related to the absence of his childhood parents. In simple terms, it is a lack of love. So, Murong Fu is the one who plays the emotional card, and it has been proven that Mrs. Wang also likes this trick. Madame Wang and Murong Fu sat down as guests, and after the maid finished serving tea, Madame Wang asked calmly, I don't think you're here to kowtow a few heads to me, are you? Murong Fu quickly replied, Auntie is joking. Auntie has a fairy-like appearance and a graceful demeanor. Not to mention kowtowing only three heads to Auntie, even if it's a few dozen or even a hundred, it's still a pleasure. My nephew is here to greet Auntie and invite my cousin to visit Dolly and enjoy the scenery together. I wonder what Auntie thinks. Mrs. Wang chuckled and said, You have a smooth tongue, I don't know where you learned it. Originally, her whole body was shrouded in an iceberg-like temperament, but this smile seemed like the melting of ice and snow, and in an instant, it was fragrant and beautiful. There's no need to say hello. As for whether Yu Yan wants to go with you or not, you can ask her later. However, I can warn you in advance that if Yu Yan suffers any injustice, I won't spare you. Upon hearing this, Murong Fu was overjoyed. It seemed that his goal of improving his relationship with the Wang family had been largely achieved. It seemed that praising women's beauty was useful in any world. As we were talking about our daily routine, two women's coquettish voices came from outside the corridor, one in front of the other. A voice chased after him, Miss, Miss, please slow down and don't fall. Another voice sounded sixteen or seventeen years old, as if the wind was blowing a bell, or like a yellow oriole coming out of the valley. The soft voice was mixed with gasps. Cousin, cousin. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Traveling with Beauty You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Traveling with Beauty The palace-dressed girl ran all the way into the side hall, with a pink face and sweat on her face, clearly rushing all the way. Although I had already gained a general impression of this Heavenly Dragon's number one beauty through the original owner's memory, the stunning experience I witnessed with my own eyes was far beyond the comparison of the images in my memory. The girl was dressed in light yellow palace attire, elegant yet bright. Inying has a slender waist, less than a grip, a pink face without any makeup, but it is incredibly beautiful, with a hint of childishness still present. It has both the allure of a young girl and a hint of mature woman's charm. Her beautiful eyes were full of emotion, with a hint of joy and shyness, staring fixedly at Morong Fu. Morong Fu felt that the original owner was at a loss. In his past life on the internet, Morong Fu had also watched many beautiful women, and there were also many teaching videos of teachers with both moral and artistic qualities. However, compared to the young girl in front of him, it was like a stinky fish and rotten shrimp compared to a full Han audience, and a mediocre and vulgar fan compared to a goddess and fairy. No, there was no comparability at all. Even if there was a thought of comparison, it was a desecration of the beautiful woman. Azu Abi is also considered stunning, but compared to the girl in front of her, she is still far behind. No wonder Duanyu, that little pervert, has been lingering in his memory ever since. That's it, young man. You're in love, and a voice echoes in Murong Fu's heart. Cousin. A coquettish and timid call pulled Murong Fu back to reality, and Murong Fu suddenly realized that he was stunned when he first saw a beautiful woman. I'm not promising. Am I Murong Fu the kind of person who desires beauty? Murong Fu could not help but blush blush and secretly despise himself. It was just this contempt which was somewhat powerless. After a few months' absence, my cousin became increasingly beautiful and charming, and my cousin was just stunned for a moment. Murong Fu smiled and said. There is a saying that beauty is in the eyes of lovers. Moreover, 
Wang Yuyan has admired Murong Fu since childhood and has been staying for a longer time. After her love affair began, she even regarded Murong Fu as the ideal husband entrusted to her for life. This time, she heard that Murong Fu was injured while practicing martial arts and wished to fly directly to Yanzuwu. However, Wang's husband issued a foot ban order, prohibiting Wang Yuyan from taking half a step out of the mountain villa. In these few short days, Wang Yuyan only felt that it was even longer than the previous decade. Now, when her beloved stood in front of her, she even praised her beauty. Wang Yuyan felt her heart melting, and her rosy face was instantly covered in a rosy glow. Her original excitement had also turned into shyness, and her voice was as delicate as a mosquito. Cousin, do you really think so? Do you mean to compliment me again? Located in the villa, isolated from the world, the number of people I have seen from childhood to adulthood is only a few hundred. My thoughts are as pure as glass, and I can see through them at a glance. Upon hearing these words, Murong Fu felt both pity and joy, and now he does not hesitate to praise her. He made the little girl giggle, feel shy, and happy. Seeing Mrs. Wang beside her with a bitter smile, she secretly thought to herself that a true woman is not worth keeping. Finally, Mrs. Wang coughed and ended this little couple's love affair. After sitting down, Mrs. Wang spoke up and said, Yu Yen, your cousin is here to invite you on a trip. Are you willing? Upon hearing this, Wang Yu Yen was overjoyed. Not to mention going on a trip together, even if it was a fierce battle, following her beloved was still a paradise on earth. She quickly replied, yes. She then felt it was inappropriate and blushed. She lowered her head and replied, follow your mother's orders. Ah, Mrs. Wang let out a faint sigh. One month later, Dolly. A group of horses touched dozens of people, either by car or by horse, and appeared at the foot of the Wuyang Mountain in Dolly. The leader was a young master dressed in a light yellow spring shirt. He was seen standing tall, with a jade-like face, a folding fan, and a graceful demeanor. There are three beautiful women around me, each of whom is exceptionally beautiful, especially the beautiful girl dressed in apricot yellow palace attire. There are two guards behind, one holding a long sword with a straight eyebrow, while the other looks around and speaks in amazement. There are also dozens of maids and servants. Anyone who sees this line is amazed by its grandeur and grandeur. This group of people is none other than Murong Fu Wang Yuyan, Ah Zhu Abi, and the troublemaker Bao Bu Bu Bu. The group wandered through the mountains and waters all the way, not in a hurry. Through this experience, Murong Fu also roughly understood that as long as there were no emotional ups and downs, the true qi in his body would not cause damage to him. However, it is regrettable that there is no internal power, likeness skills, etc. that can be used. But with two generals from Feng Bao's side, this small dolly is not too dangerous. Moreover, there are three little beauties, Wang Yuyan, Azu, and Abi, accompanying them on a mountain and water trip. Life is like this, what can I hope for? Although the group was born in Jiangnan, they had heard of some famous scenic spots in Dali for a long time. Moreover, Murong Fu did not have any worries about his life this time. It was not much different to rush to Tianlong Temple day in and day out. Therefore, someone was sent to worship at the foot of Tianlong Temple with a letter, and the group wandered to the foot of Wuyang Mountain, hoping to have a good viewing. Murong Fu, however, was indifferent to the scenery. What he was thinking was whether the secret script deep in the boundless mountain had been taken by that fool. After swimming through the front mountain, the group wanted to head towards the back mountain, but unexpectedly encountered a disciple of the Wuyang Sword sect. The reason that the back mountain was a forbidden area of the sect, they stopped everyone. They were so angry that Feng Bao and Feng Bao immediately wanted to take action, but were stopped by Murong Fu. Although it was not a problem to deal with a small sect like Wuyang Sword with the strength of Feng Bao's two generals, Morong Fu thought to himself that offending the martial arts of Dali from the beginning was too domineering and not conducive to the future. So the group went down the mountain like this. At night, inside the inn. Humph, 
This immeasurable sword is extremely impolite. My young master thinks highly of them when he wants to visit his backyard. Besides, there is such a huge mountain peak that they can't even enter if they say they can't enter. They're just a bunch of vicious dogs. The storm slammed the table and angrily said. Murong Fu also furrowed his brows slightly. The action of this immeasurable sword was indeed somewhat domineering, but in this way, it can also be inferred that the secret scripts of Biming Divine Arts and Lingbo Micro Steps are probably still in the back mountain that have not been taken. After all, according to the original plot, Duan Yu entered the back mountain and obtained the secret script when Wuyang Sword Man Men was facing a crisis of annihilation. No, 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 since Brother Foam regards him as a vicious dog with no human nature, why argue with dogs? In my opinion, the young master has a kind heart, so it's better for us and the other two to ride up the mountain at night and give them some color to see. Bao Dong shook his head and shook his head, his eloquent demeanor causing the third daughter to burst into a coquettish smile. Murong Fu also smiled at him, feeling that Bao Dong was not as unfamiliarity with the world as described in the original work, and still had some merits. Cousin, since it's so troublesome to go to the back mountain, we can skip it. With so many mountains and rivers in Dali, we may not necessarily have to look at its boundless mountain. Wang Yuyen coquettishly said that in the past few days, Murong Fu has been very different from before. With gentle words, Wang Yuyen's heart was trembling. In the past, when this cousin talked to her about either martial arts or national affairs, it was boring and tight. In order to have a conversation with her cousin, Wang Yuyan read many martial arts classics against her heart, but in fact, she didn't like them. Nowadays, my cousin seems to have changed a person. He is very kind to me and has already made Wang Yuyan overjoyed. As a young child, he naturally does not want his cousin to take risks with himself. It's not necessarily necessary to push forward, there's a better way right now, isn't there, Ah Zhu? After speaking, Murong Fu looked at Ah Zhu, who was standing behind him with his hand hanging down, with a smile on his face. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Secret Treasures of Grottoes You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Secret Treasures of Grottoes The group followed Murong Fu's gaze and looked at Ah Zhu, initially puzzled, but soon realized that this method was very clever. The next morning, behind Mount Wuyang. The disciple guarding the back mountain is just strange. Why did the fellow disciples who changed positions this morning come an hour earlier than before, but I didn't think too much about it. In the past, guarding the back mountain was always a hard job, and some people were willing to compete. I was happy and at ease, so I didn't say anything and left on my own. Watching the mountain guarding disciple walk away, the group finally couldn't help but laugh. The So. called disciples of the Infinite Sword in this line were originally disguised by Murong Fu and his team. Ah Zhu's extraordinary disguise technique, even the leader of the beggar sect, Xiao Feng, can dress up perfectly. It's not a problem for just a few disciples of the Infinite Sect who patrol the mountains. Everyone praised Ah Zhu's superb disguise technique, but while Murong Fu praised it, he couldn't help but think a little more. With such a powerful facial contouring technique, anyone who marries this girl would have a better life after getting married Park, this is not a car for kindergarten. The group looked at Murong Fu's eerie expression, only thinking that it was the aftermath of his madness, and didn't pay much attention to it. They just looked at Murong Fu's gaze, which was somewhat, caring for the intellectually disabled. After walking along the back mountain path for a while, the group arrived at a narrow canyon. Along the way, the mountains are towering and green, the rocks are rugged, and the vast forest and sea cover the sky and sun. Murong Fu couldn't help but sigh, no wonder Dali, as a small country sandwiched between the two strong neighbors of the Song dynasty in Tubo, was able to survive. Just because of this dangerous geographical environment, it can be said that it has taken advantage of geographical advantages. Although it is not enough to compete for dominance in the world, it is indeed more than enough for self-protection. 
After walking about seven or eight miles, it finally became clear and clear. In front of me was a lake, smooth as a mirror, with a small waterfall continuously flowing into the lake from the mountain peak. There is also a mirror like giant stone standing in the center of the lake, reflecting a faint light in the sunlight. After a moment of contemplation, Murong Fu understood that this large stone must be paired with the mirror stone at the entrance of the back mountain. At night, under the moonlight, the figures of Wu Yazi and Li Chiushui practicing swordsmanship were projected onto the stone wall. At the end of the day, the immeasurable jade bai, which is regarded as the treasure of the sect by this small immeasurable sword, is just a prop for the two lighting figures who once lived in seclusion here. The Wuyang sword shadow, which was regarded as a fairy tale by the two generations of leaders of Wuyang sword, is ultimately just a result of the hands of their masters. Thinking of this, Murong Fu not only laughed but also felt sad. Many people only talk about the children of the martial arts world, enjoying their joys and sorrows. Most of them habitually substitute themselves for the status of great heroes with unparalleled martial arts skills. How many people can appreciate the bitterness and helplessness of those with low martial arts skills? Even the noble young master from a martial arts family like Murong Fu in the original work ended in a dismal ending. How many times can a person in the martial arts world go as they please? The beautiful scenery in front of us, as expected by extraordinary people, amazed the group. They all said that this trip was worth it, and even Bao Bu did not bring out his iconic phrase, no, no. The person who can live in this scenery should have such a divine appearance. Wang Yuyan leaned gently against Murong Fu's side, smiling and smiling. Then let's invite my cousin to visit this immortal cave with me. Murong Fu took advantage of the situation and held Wang Yuyan's smooth little hand. A gesture that was ordinary in future couples made this little girl shyly bow her head and say, yes, in a mosquito-like, imperceptible voice. The crowd behind the two of them, seeing their intimate behavior, wisely did not disturb them and allowed them to go. Along the way, Murong Fu was indifferent to the scenery, only secretly groping for the mechanism on the stone wall. Finally, he took Wang Yuyan to the opposite bank and noticed a loose spot on the stone wall. Murong Fu slapped it hard. After a burst of clattering sounds from the mechanism, a cave suddenly appeared in front of the two. Wang Yuyan was surprised and covered her small mouth, looking at Murong Fu with beautiful eyes. Cousin, this. Let's go in and take a look together, Murong Fu smiled. Mm, Wang Yuyan whispered in agreement, as for the doubts in her heart, they had long been thrown out of the clouds. A girl in a passionate relationship is really easy to deceive, Murong Fu thought to himself, rubbing and rubbing. Holding Wang Yuyan's small hand, Murong Fu lit up the fire folder he carried with him and walked ahead. The cave has obviously been uninhabited for a long time, and the air is filled with a musty smell. After walking for a while, another stone gate is seen. Murong Fu asked Wang Yuyan to step aside and cautiously push open the stone door. The stone door opened and a cloud of dust rushed over his face, causing Murong Fu to cough repeatedly. Entering the stone gate, I saw a complete set of items such as a stone stove and a stone bed, which were no different from what was described in the book. The copper mirror and dressing table in the corner of the room hinted at the identity of the hostess. Murong Fu looked at the scene in front of him and exclaimed, being able to find such a beautiful and secluded place in this place, the owner must be a reclusive scholar. Yu Yen, what do you think? Yu Yen. Murong Fu called out repeatedly, but after the sound, the beautiful woman had no reaction at all. She couldn't help but feel strange. Looking back, she saw the beautiful woman in front of her bowing her head and silently shedding tears. Murong Fu was greatly surprised and quickly stepped forward to embrace Wang Yuyan, saying, Yu Yen, what's wrong with you? Are you unhappy? Unexpectedly, this moment made the beautiful woman in her arms even more sad. She threw herself into Murong Fu's chest without speaking, only sobbing softly. Murong Fu couldn't help but comfort her softly. After a while, Wang Yuyan finally stopped crying and choked up, saying, Cousin, I don't know why. 
Coming here always feels so sad, like this place has some kind of deep connection with me. Murong Fu appeared calm on the surface, but there were ripples in his heart. Wang Yuyan was actually the illegitimate daughter of Mrs. Wang and Duan Jing Chen, which he knew from a divine perspective. However, Mrs. Wang's background is a mystery in the Golden Book. It is said that Wu Yazi and Li Qiushui were born. The new version of Tian Long is said that Li Qiushui asked Madame Wang to call Ding Chuanxiu father. Murong Fu complained about this change countless times before crossing. Regardless of Mrs. Wang's background, why did Wang Yuyan have such a deep impression of this place? Murong Fu vaguely felt that the world was not entirely within his cognitive scope, and he did not have a divine perspective. Thinking of this possibility, Murong Fu's hand lightly caressed the beauty, trembling slightly. This was an instinctive fear of the unknown. Gently caressing Wang Yuyan, Murong Fu comforted and said, Don't cry. My cousin is here to accompany you. If you don't like it, my cousin will go out with you. Wang Yuyan said softly, It's okay, cousin. It's rare to find a secret realm, how could you miss it? After wiping away her tears, she regained the girl's liveliness and cuteness. So the two of them walked a certain distance forward, and after passing a step, they suddenly saw a person holding a long sword, with the tip of the sword pointing straight at them. Ah! Wang Yuyan was so scared that she hid behind Murong Fu. Don't be afraid, it's just a statue, Murong Fu comforted. Upon hearing this, Wang Yuyan cautiously poked her small head out from behind Murong Fu, which surprised her even more. I saw the sculpture in front of me was a lifelike woman in palace clothes. Her clothes had been damaged for a long time, but she did not lose her charm. She looked like an immortal. What's more, the woman's appearance was almost the same as Wang Yuyan's. What's going on? Wang Yuyan asked timidly and coquettishly. There were too many surprises for this little beauty today, first the mysterious cave, and then this jade statue. Wang Yuyan felt that the doubts of the past sixteen years combined were not as great as today. This time, Morong Fu seemed to have not heard, just walked straight to the pussy in front of the jade statue and crouched down to examine. At this glance, Murong Fu's heart was half cold. Under the Putuan, everything is empty, where are there any secrets? End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Confusion and Confusion. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 Confusion and Confusion In an instant, various thoughts surged into Murong Fu's heart. Surprise, disappointment. Doubt is it possible to run a thousand miles for nothing? Did others take the lead? Or, to put it another way, there are no secrets at all. Murong Fu felt that things were developing in an unknown direction, as if there was an invisible hand in the dark, controlling everything. Thinking of this possibility, Murong Fu felt as if a faint chill had risen from behind. For Murong Fu, what is his biggest advantage in wandering in this world? Is it the martial arts and family background brought by this leather bag? No, it's just a foresight of all events, knowing who should be friendly and what not to do. Knowing these can help one maintain one's own land in the turbulent times of the martial arts world. As for whether to restore the country or not, it is just empty talk. Living a good life for oneself is the most serious thing. But what if things are moving in an uncontrolled direction? In the original work, Murong Fu went crazy and the beautiful maid Abi never gave up. So what would be the more tragic outcome? Murong Fu dare not think. What Murong Fu didn't expect at this moment was that from the moment he crossed into this world, the gears of fate had quietly shifted. Cousin, cousin, cousin. Wang Yuyan looked at Murong Fu with a worried expression and called out repeatedly, but Murong Fu just stood still his face turned pale. Wang Yuyan couldn't help but hold Murong Fu's big hand and shake it, finally pulling him back from his lost state. Ah, cousin, what's wrong? Murong Fu finally reacted and asked awkwardly. Cousin, your face is so pale and you're sweating. I called you, hello, multiple times, but you seem to be unable to hear me. 
I'm so worried. Wang Yuyan's voice was tinged with tears. Sorry, Yuyan, you're worried. Murong Fu gently embraced Wang Yuyan and comforted her softly. After a while, Wang Yuyan realized that she was being held in her cousin's arms, with the burning breath of her beloved emanating from her head, and a soft catkin also being grabbed by Murong Fu. Instantly, like a frightened little rabbit, the bullet fired. Upon seeing this, Murong Fu only smiled and did not speak. Then, Murong Fu approached the jade statue, bent down, and carefully examined it. I saw two lines of small characters embroidered on the left foot of the jade statue. Kowtow a thousand times, obey my command. Murong Fu nodded, this is not a problem. Turn around and look at your right foot, surprised. On the right foot, there are also two small words. Driven by me, I will never be able to recover. How could this be? This is the only thought in Murong Fu's heart at this moment. At this moment, Wang Yuyan also walked over and saw Murong Fu squatting on the ground, staring blankly at the soles of the jade statue's feet. She was worried and felt a strange feeling in her heart. Her pink face couldn't help but turn red. Can you say that? Thinking of this possibility, Murong Fu turned around and instructed Wang Yuyan, Yuyan, please step back a bit. Although she didn't know why, Wang Yuyan instinctively followed her cousin's instructions. After waiting for Wang Yuyan to withdraw enough distance, Murong Fu took a deep breath and then brushed out his waist sword. After a few sword flashes, the jade statue's clothes broke, and Murong Fu quickly rolled and dodged to the side. Several small arrows rushed out from the ground and collided with the stone wall, wiping out sparks. See, Murong Fu took a cold breath. After a while, when there was no movement, Murong Fu cautiously walked into the jade statue. With the light of the fire switch, small characters like grains of rice could be faintly seen on the body of the jade statue. Murong Fu knew that this jade statue was actually Li Chioshue's sister, a character whose name was not mentioned in the original work. But it is difficult to explain why the secret script that records the two great divine arts of Baiming and Lingbo Weibu will have the destined person kill all the disciples of the Xiaoyao sect. After all, if it were Li Chioshue, it wouldn't be reasonable. If she wanted to, it would be much easier and more efficient to do it herself, and Li Chioshue wouldn't know the Northern Underworld Divine Arts or the Lingbo Micro Steps, so her skills were insignificant. And from a psychological motivation perspective, it is even more impossible. Before his death, Li Chioshue always felt guilty about Wuyazi. How could he go to great lengths to let an unreliable person kill all the Xiaoyao disciples? These sisters are still in a big fight with Tong Lao over a ring that symbolizes the identity of the leader of the Xiaoyao sect. So who left the secret script? Who carved the characters on the jade statue? What a troublemaker about the Xiaoyao sect. I lost sight of the name of such a sect. Murong Fu's contemplation was interrupted by a scream of surprise. Ah! Perhaps Murong Fu's constant gaze at the jade statue was beyond Wang Yuyan's expectations. Under the firelight, the jade statue was naked and increasingly beautiful. Wang Yuyan's breathing was rapid, and her pretty face blushed as if she was about to drip blood. In the cave, there was a charming atmosphere. Yuyan, come here and take a look. Murong Fu called out repeatedly, and Wang Yuyan suppressed her shyness and almost moved step by step to Murong Fu's side. The girl's shyness made her dare not look up at Murong Fu. Yuyan, help your cousin take a look. Ah, uh, no, this kind of thing will have to wait until after getting married. Wang Yuyan closed her eyes and shook her head desperately. Ha, get married. Let's talk about it after getting married. First, help me read the text on it. Murong Fu was stunned, thinking to himself, is this girl so bold? At this moment, Wang Yuyan finally understood that she had misunderstood, and her face turned pink. After a while, the ripples in her heart calmed down. Wang Yuyan looked at the jade statue and saw that it was covered in dense text, with the first four bean-sized characters. 
Biming divine art, after a while, Wang Yuyan said to Murong Fu in a trembling voice, There is such a magical cultivation in the world. Upon hearing these words, Murong Fu was overjoyed. As expected, this jade statue had a hidden meaning. Immediately, he looked at Wang Yuyan and said, Yuyan, read me and I will remember. Let's seize this rare opportunity together. Without hesitation, Wang Yuyan responded and then the two of them read and recorded. Unconsciously, the time for a meal passed. Murong Fu took a deep breath and looked at the densely written paper in front of him, showing a pleased smile. At the same time, he didn't forget to cast a grateful look at Wang Yuyan. It's been hard, Yuyan. Yuyan just needs her cousin to be happy. Wang Yuyan coquettishly said, with a soft and shy appearance that was particularly endearing. Coupled with the dim environment in the cave and the beautiful atmosphere, Murong Fu's heart was filled with excitement. Under an impulse, he grabbed the beautiful woman's willow waist and kissed her cherry lips. Wang Yuyan let out a whimper, and her hand lightly patted Murong Fu's chest in vain. It was not so much a resistance, but more like a response. Then, as if she had lost all her strength, she collapsed into Murong Fu's arms. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Enemies in the Dark Night You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Enemies in the Dark Night For a long time, lips parted. Wang Yuyan huddled in Murong Fu's arms, like a obedient little sheep. Cousin, Wang Yuyan murmured, her eyes blurred. Murong Fu leaned closer to Wang Yuyan's ear and whispered something, and in an instant, the twenty-eight beauties were covered in a rosy glow. Let's go, Yuyan. Later, Brother Bao and the others should be anxious, said Murong Fu. Mm, Wang Yuyan nodded gently. Although there was still a suspected Jinlong chess game on the side, Murong Fu didn't want to bother memorizing the score. The Zhenlong chess game in the original work was also accidentally cracked by Su Zhu, one of the three main characters of Tianlong, by chance. The original owner's level of expertise in Go is not high, and he is also a stinky chess basket. He doesn't think that by watching the game in advance, he can break it one day. This is like a difficult problem in certain science and engineering disciplines in later generations. It is speculated that even if everyone knows the problem, how many people can prove it? Sometimes there must be in life, but when there is no time in life, do not force yourself to seek it. It is already satisfying to have Murong Fu, who originally belonged to the protagonist's team, access to Biming Divine Arts. Besides, with Wang Yuyan and other peerless figures on the side, eagerly memorizing some laborious chess manual, wouldn't it not disappoint this great spring scenery? The two of them walked out of the hole hand in hand, just as they bumped into a group of people, including Bao Butong, who was eagerly searching for them. Azu's sharp eyes caught sight of Murong Fu and Wang Yuyan, and he quickly called everyone over. Seeing this, Wang Yuyan instinctively shrank behind Murong Fu. At first, everyone was taken aback, and then understood. They wanted to laugh, but due to Murong Fu's dignity, they suppressed their laughter. Only Bao Bu dropped a few words from his backpack and said, A graceful and graceful lady, a good match for a gentleman. The canyon was filled with a joyful atmosphere. In the evening, when he returned to the inn, Murong Fu wanted to discuss with Wang Yuyan the Biming Divine Arts technique he had obtained from the cave. However, no matter how Murong Fu called the door, Wang Yuyan only tightly closed the door and did not answer. Wang Yuyan's understanding of the martial arts journey far surpasses that of Murong Fu. She was also a bit cautious when taking her along this time. With her guidance, the combat power exerted by Feng Bao and his companions will double, and there is basically no danger in Dali. Helpless, Murong Fu had to instruct Wang Yuyan to rest early through the door, and then he drifted away. Ah, a woman's heart, a needle in the sea. Murong Fu sighed. Naturally, Murong Fu did not notice the opening of the door behind him, the peeping eyes of the young girl behind the door, and the sigh of relief as he left. In the room, a lamp is like a bean. 
Murong Fu stared at the secret script transcribed from the infinite jade cave during the day, and finally let go of what was in his hand with a faint sigh. With the memory of the original owner, Murong Fu can easily understand the meaning of the secret script. It has to be admitted that the original master's martial arts talent is still very high. If Murong Fu understood it on his own, he wouldn't be able to see the famous hall for ten and a half days. But the supreme technique is in hand but cannot be practiced, which makes Murong Fu extremely headache-free. It's like a peerless beauty in front of you, but you can't even come forward and say a word. According to the explanation in Biming Divine Art, to practice this technique, one must suffer from the backlash of the technique unless their original cultivation is completely dissipated. Duan Yu in the original work happened to have no internal strength at all, which allowed him to take advantage of it and develop it into a lineage of Biming. But at this moment, Murong Fu's true energy is stuck in all four limbs and bones, and even if he wants to disperse his energy, he has no way to start. Moreover, even if one can scatter the energy, it is still very risky. A slight mistake can make one a true useless person. Murong Fu then put away the scroll in his hand, spread it out, then put it away, and then spread it out, all the way until the latter half of the night. Finally, Murong Fu decided to put down the scroll and turn off the lights to sleep. Just as Murong Fu stood up, the door opened with a loud bang, bringing in a gust of wind that instantly extinguished the oil lamp. Then, a black shadow rushed straight towards Murong Fu, with fingers and claws, pointing directly at his throat. Murong Fu was shocked, and in the crisis, he had no other choice but to roll under the table regardless of his posture. The dark figure was stunned for a moment, seemingly not expecting Murong Fu to come up with such a plan. Taking advantage of the other party's distraction, Murong Fu lifted the table and smashed it at the man in black in front. The tea dim sum on the table immediately spilled all over the man in black, and the whole man in black was very embarrassed. Taking advantage of the moment when the man in black was stunned, Murong Fu hurriedly rushed out of the room and shouted loudly in the corridor, Someone, there's a thief, someone, catch a thief. He ran towards the room where Bao Butong and the two of them were in turmoil. There were already several rooms in the inn with lights on. At this sound, all the lights in each room were on. Some people opened the window to check, while others were martial arts enthusiasts who relied on their martial arts skills and drew weapons to rush out of the door, shouting, Where are the thieves? Among them, Bao Butong and the two troublemakers rushed to the front. From a distance, the two of them saw their own young master running towards the crowd, shouting and shouting, followed by a man in black with five fingers in claws, grabbing towards Morong Fu's heart. Fong Bao and his companions were in a hurry, and the storm erupted with a fierce swoop. The long sword was unsheathed, and a move called Yekka exploring the sea hit the black-clothed man's wrist. The man in black punched barehanded, but did not dodge. He turned his claws into a palm and swung his palm towards the back of the stormy and evil sword. The storm felt a strong force passing from the back of the knife to the arm. Suddenly, the tiger's mouth tingled, and the long sword almost slipped away. Then, the man in black took a step and flashed behind Fumbwa Evil. With lightning speed, he pointed at Fumbwa Evil's jade pillow acupoint on the back of his head. Fumbwa Evil immediately rolled his eyes, and his body fell to the ground like an empty pocket. Fourth brother. Fourth brother. Bao Butong and Murong Fu shouted loudly at the same time. Bao Butong reached out with both palms, striking the man in black with one palm and slashing towards his waist with the other. I didn't want the man in black to be much faster than Bao Butong. He slapped Bao Butong in the face, causing him to fly backwards and hit his head on the escalator, fainting. Seeing the two loyal guardians of Fong Bao, unaware of life and death, Murong Fu's mind was instantly engorged with blood, his eyes turning red, and he didn't care about losing all of his skills. However, the opponent's martial arts were exceptionally high, so he drew a long sword from the nearby spectator's hand and took a step with an arrow to stab the man in black in the chest. 
The man in black, however, easily grasped the long sword with just two fingers. With a slight stroke of luck, the sword broke into three sections, and then the tip of the sword was thrown, cutting open Murong Fu's right sleeve and robe, and blood gushed out in an instant. Then, the man in black grabbed onto Murong Fu's collar and slapped him a few times. Without saying a word, he left Murong Fu and jumped onto the eaves, disappearing into the night, leaving only Murong Fu covering his hot cheeks. There are also two wind bags lying on the ground, unaware of their life or death as family generals. Inside the inn, people were shouting and horses were neighing, causing chaos. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Clouds of Doubts You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Clouds of Doubts After a Night of Shock, the Next Morning A group of people gathered in Murong Fu's room, their faces not very attractive. Bao Butong was injured the most severely and is still lying in bed resting. The storm is second to none, and he is struggling to sit up with a look of unwillingness on his face. Although Murong Fu received a slap in the face, it was just a skin injury and his face was not good. Looking. It was not a big deal. At this moment, his face was gloomy and he remained silent. Wang Yuyan, Zhu Abi, and the other three women felt the tense atmosphere in the room and wanted to say something. They opened their mouths but didn't know what to say. Our incompetence has made the young master's body in danger, and we deserve to die a thousand times. Bao Bu Bu forcefully supported himself and bowed to Murong Fu in bed. Without saying a few words, he coughed and was about to collapse. Azu quickly stepped forward to help him. Bao San Gu, Feng Si Gu, it's not your fault for what happened last night. It's me who implicated you. Murong Fu gave a mournful smile, mixed with emotions. Traveling through this world, Murong Fu did not have many dragon like ideas. All he wanted was to save his life and family in this chaotic world, and it had nothing to do with him, whether it was imperial ambition or unparalleled martial arts. Even some of the excessive actions of others were dealt with coldly by Murong Fu, and if he could tolerate them, he would endure them. Regarding the small actions of the forces under the Yanziwu banner that Bao Bu mentioned earlier, Murong Fu did not take any retaliatory actions. But Murong Fu's forbearance did not bring peace to himself and the people around him, as evidenced by last night's incident. What would happen if the assassin last night didn't find Murong Fu, but Wang Yuyan and Ah Zhu Abi? Murong Fu dare not think. Last night, the assassin's martial arts were so advanced that I had never heard of it before. I never expected that there would be such a peerless expert in Dali. Phone Bo's face turned pale and he felt lingering fear. It is evident that last night's incident left a terrifying shadow on Fumbwa Evil, a madman who can spare his life even if there is a fight. Murong Fu remembered that one year when he passed by the Taihu Lake Lake, he met a group of hundreds of the Taihu Lake Lake water thieves. They were not afraid of the evil storm. They were still fighting hard with four swords. Finally, they fought to kill the head of the thieves, which made them powerful. The group discussed for a long time, but ultimately did not come to any substantial results. For safety reasons, it was decided to have one room for the female family and one room for the male, with the two rooms located close to each other. After the injuries of Feng Bao and his companions improved, the group immediately set off for Tianlong Temple. At night, under the oil lamp. A group of servants were laying a floor in Murong Fu's room, and he was already in a deep dream. Murong Fu was pondering alone under the oil lamp. Who is the mysterious man in black? What is the purpose of the night raid? There are not many experts who can subdue the two generals of Feng Bao with one move, and each one is a well-known expert, such as Master Kurong in Dali, Emperor Baoding Duan Siming, and the Crown Prince of Yanqing who is the leader of the four major villains. But these three people, one is a virtuous monk, one is a ruler of a country, and the other is even more impossible. Duan Yanqing, the world's number one and known as, full of evil, ran all the way over to give himself a big mouth. What is the picture? 
He had thought that the other party was the father of the original owner, Morong Bo, but based on the timeline, it is speculated that Morong Bo should still be competing with Xiao Yuan Shan to copy books at Shaolin Temple at this time, because there is no news of Xuanbei's death or Shaolin Xuanzi senior monks rushing to Dali. Otherwise, Morong Fu wouldn't dare to come all the way to make others misunderstand. In short, this matter is shrouded in mystery everywhere. The next morning, the group set off for Tianlong Temple. As early as a few days ago, Morong Fu sent people to Tianlong Temple to pay respects in advance. Although it was a few days earlier than the time stated on the respects, it was not particularly abrupt. Tianlong Temple is actually a royal temple in Dali Kingdom. Although Dali is a small country, it has always believed in Buddhism. Throughout history, the rulers of Dali have had the habit of becoming monks after abdication. Therefore, with the support of the Dali state, the Tianlong Temple is not far behind the Shaolin Temple, which is the largest temple in the Wulin today. Murong Fu and others walked all the way, but saw pavilions and towers arranged in a neat and orderly manner. The entire temple is nestled by mountains and rivers, nestled in pine forests, majestic yet tranquil, attracting admiration from Morong Fu and others along the way. Due to concerns about the mysterious person's comeback, Morong Fu and others were not confident in leaving Azu Abi and others inside the museum. Fortunately, Tianlong Temple was not that dilapidated place. After explaining the reason, the monks of Tianlong Temple released them, saving a lot of trouble. Upon arriving at the meditation room, the abbot of Tianlong Temple, Master Ben, personally received the crowd. The group had finished their ritual and Murong Fu stepped forward, respectfully explaining their purpose. I didn't expect that young Master Murong, a generation of outstanding people, would suffer such a great calamity. I deeply regret it. In addition, when young Master Murong traveled thousands of miles, he was actually assassinated within the territory of our Dali. This is even more unfortunate for our Dali. My Buddha is merciful. Since young Master Murong is in trouble, I will come to visit him and treat him. Please come with me, said Master Benin. I originally thought the other party would refuse, but upon hearing what they said, Morong Fu let go of a big stone in his heart and immediately followed the guidance of the original cause. Seeing this, Bao Bu couldn't help but shout, Young Master! Wait here, don't disturb the purification of the high dot ranking monks in Tianlong Temple, Morong Fu said calmly. Before coming, Bao Bu and others advised Morong Fu not to go this trip. If there was any connection between Tianlong Temple and the man in black that night, wouldn't this trip be a trap for himself? However, Morong Fu insisted that this matter had nothing to do with Tianlong Temple, so he insisted on going, and everyone could not and could only follow Morong Fu's arrangements. Passing through a long corridor, we arrived at another meditation room, which was much smaller than the previous one, but clearly more elegant. The room was filled with fragrant incense, refreshing the heart and soul, and refreshing the moment one stepped inside. There were several monks in the room, and Morong Fu knew that these were probably the other three senior monks of Tianlong Temple who were of the same generation as Ben Yin. He immediately respectfully stepped forward to pay his respects, and Ben Yin introduced them one by one. The ceremony has been concluded, and both sides are seated as guests and guests. Master Ben Yin spoke up and said, Master Morong has come from a long distance, and Tianlong Temple should do its utmost to save Morong Gongzi. Only then can we live up to my Buddha's decree. However, now Tianlong Temple has encountered a major event that concerns the safety of Tianlong Temple. Our century-old foundation is in the future, and our disciples of the same generation must do their best to deal with it. Please forgive me for not being able to do my best. We will wait until our temple has retreated from the enemy, overcome this calamity, and then fully heal Morong Gongzi. Upon hearing this, Morong Fu was slightly moved and said, What a disaster has befallen your temple, making all the high monks feel like they are facing a great enemy. Although Morong Fu has limited intelligence and strength, since he is here, he cannot sit idly by. Even if his mind is in a state of confusion, 
he will still contribute his humble efforts. Upon hearing these words, the four Zen masters of the same generation exchanged a few glances and saw shock, shame, and other emotions in each other's eyes. Master Benin let out a long sigh, clasped his hands together, and bowed to Murong Fu, saying, Amitba Buddha, Master Murong is brave and courageous. Although he has lost all his skills, he still refuses to avoid life and death, and is in urgent need of others. I and my fellow disciples are extremely grateful, but this matter is a crisis for our temple. Master Murong does not need to take personal risks. Upon hearing this, Murong Fu stood up and said, People all say, North Chiao Fong, South Murong. Although Murong Fu did not have the opportunity to witness the demeanor of the top gang leader in the world today, he had also heard of his heroic deeds of chivalry and righteousness, serving the country and the people. I, Murong Fu, am a great man, and how could I have earned a false reputation? Even if Murong Fu and others are here today, even if they are thousands of miles away and hear of others in trouble, they should not avoid danger and help others solve their problems, let alone today. Murong Fu is useless. It's better not to sprinkle this passionate blood on your temple. How could we fear disaster and leave far away? The reason after these words, all the monks in the meditation room were moved. As he stood up, he respectfully bowed to Murong Fu and said, Everyone from Tianlong Temple, thank you to the benefactor Murong. The benefactor is highly righteous, and I cannot afford it. I greatly admire him. Then he sat down again and spoke softly, This is a long story, all because it happened six months ago. Some people used to say that the man in black was Murong Bo, and that the author had lowered the protagonist's intelligence. It's better to point it out so that no one can argue about it. This book integrates various versions of Tian Long, including TV dramas, trilogy versions, new revisions, and classic analysis and speculation by fans of Jin Yong. It also includes some appropriate secondary designs by the author himself, and some bugs that may arise during the process will be fixed. I hope everyone can continue reading it, end of this chapter. Chapter 8 Gongzi Gaoi You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Gongzi Gaoi After listening to Abbot Ben Yin's narration, Murong Fu remained speechless for a while, with a very brilliant expression on his face. Originally, the term, Great Enemy, referred to in the original context refers to the current national teacher of the Tubo Kingdom, the Great Wilming King Jumozi. This person was considered a close friend of Murong Fu's father Murong Bo back then. The two of them had many discussions along the way in martial arts. Murong Bo talked about the world swordsmanship and vigorously praised the secret of the Dali Duan family's non-transmission. The Six Meridian Divine Sword is also known as the world's top swordsmanship, which is still above the Dragon City Sword passed down by the Murong family, indicating his admiration for this set of swordsmanship. Before his death, Murong Bo had read through all the martial arts in the world, but he missed out on what he called the best swordsmanship in the world. Whenever he talked about this matter, he felt deeply regretful. Therefore, Jil Maji traveled thousands of miles from Tubo to Dali in order to obtain the sword manual of the Six Veins Divine Sword and bring it to the tomb of Murong Bo for burning, as a gesture of goodwill towards his old friends. Thinking of Kyumo Ji as the protector of the Tubo Kingdom, he naturally has excellent martial arts skills. Even regardless of martial arts skills, in terms of their status within Tubo, they are not just ordinary people who can be dismissed. The reason why Dali, a small and small country, was able to survive in the gap between the two strong neighbors of the Song dynasty and Tubo was mainly due to the friendship between the two, and no one was offended. Now, if the six meridian sword scriptures were given to Kumoji, the face of the kingdom of Dali would be completely destroyed. If he could not wait, Kumoji would return to Tubo in embarrassment and anger, and persuade the Tibetan ruler to launch a large army to conquer Dali, which would be another catastrophe. Therefore, these days, I and several fellow disciples have been constantly worried about this matter, and I don't know how to solve it. There was an indescribable bitterness in Ben Yin's voice. Murong Fu's lips twitched. 
dare to stir up trouble for a while, but have you been tricked by the cheap old man again? Previously, I did not adopt Bao Butong's suggestion to go north to Shaolin, just because I thought the mess left by Murong Bo was not easy to end. As a result, I ran all the way to Dali and received a slap on my ear. Even though Renchenlong Temple did not provide treatment, I also stumbled upon the sins that Murong Bo had committed back then. Murong Fu forced his luck and finally suppressed the urge to vomit blood. For a long time, Murong stood up and walked to the four senior monks of his generation. He lifted the hem of his robe and bowed respectfully. Upon seeing the situation, Sibin was shocked and asked, Master Murong, what does this mean? Please get up, please get up. Murong Fu looked up and looked at the four senior monks of his generation, sincerely saying, although my late father has passed away, this dispute is ultimately caused by my Murong family. How could Murong Fu sit on the wall and watch? So, in the future, what will Murong Fu look like and establish himself in the martial arts world? In life, one only seeks to have a clear conscience. Since this cause was planted by my late father, let Mu Rongfu take over and bear this fruit. If the Tibetan monk Jumozi comes to forcibly demand the Six Meridian Sword Sutra from your temple, Murong Fu will be on the side trying to persuade him. If he is stubborn, Murong Fu has no other choice but to commit suicide in front of him and resolve this cause and effect after speaking. Morong Fu drew out his long sword from his waist and with a swish, the blade swept over and cut off a corner of Morong Fu's robe. If you break this oath, you should dress like this. Morong Fu held a long sword in his hand and his gaze was resolute. The abbot slowly closed his eyes and silently recited the Buddhist scriptures in his mouth. The three monks of the same generation behind him either lowered their heads and remained silent, or their faces and ears turned red. Finally, the abbot opened his eyes and sighed, Amitbha Buddha, we falsely claim to follow the teachings of the Buddha. However, our hearts are filled with thoughts of honor, disgrace, and safety in a corner of our temple, completely disregarding the compassionate heart of our Buddha to save sentient beings. I have lived in vain for 60.4 years, and have practiced for many years. I am not as knowledgeable in this Buddhist theory as Master Murong, an outsider. I feel ashamed, ashamed. Behind him, the three monks, including the original view, the original appearance, and the original ginseng, also looked ashamed. Master Jasha, kid. Murong Fu scratched his head, feeling a bit embarrassed. His previous words were actually more out of an attitude of wandering through the world. If it's in a past life, even if it's helping an elderly person on the road, it needs to be considered. After all, the cost of chivalry and righteousness is completely borne by oneself. As a humble person, one cannot take risks. Now that I have traveled to this world, in a sense, I have also died once. The seed of chivalry in my heart is unconsciously reviving. In fact, even Murong Fu himself did not realize it, and unconsciously, his mentality gradually changed. As for whether this change is good or bad, it is still difficult to say. But currently, it seems that the benefits far outweigh the drawbacks. Originally, the four books and their group politely declined Murong Fu's request for medical treatment under the pretext of being a formidable enemy. But now I feel embarrassed to refuse again, after all, they are willing to give up their lives for the Tianlong Temple matter. It's not appropriate for me to keep grinding and shrinking my hands and feet, isn't it? Not to mention a few self-proclaimed high monks, even the lowest level shemi in the martial arts world cannot do such a thing. If it were to be spread, there was no need to wait for Komoji to come and visit. Tianlong Temple had already buried its century-old reputation. So, the four monks ordered the young monks in the temple to clean several clean rooms for Morong Fu and his group to stay. My group stayed in the meditation room to discuss Morong Fu's treatment. Under the leadership of a young monk, Murong Fu returned to the meditation room where Wang Yuyan and others were located. In the room, Feng Bao Er was worried about the safety of Murong Fu and had been waiting impatiently for a long time. He didn't sit or stand either. If it weren't for Ah Zhu and Abi persuading him on the side, 
he might have rushed out to find his own young master the next moment. At this moment, Murong Fu happened to be led by the young monk and returned to the room. Cousin. Wang Yuyan was the first to see Murong Fu coming in, and her beautiful eyes lit up immediately. She cheered and rushed towards Murong Fu. After the beautiful and gentle atmosphere in the cave a few days ago, as well as the twists and turns of last night, Wang Yuyan had already engraved the mark of Murong Fu in her heart. The shyness of that young girl was momentarily ignored in front of her lover. After a while, I finally realized that there were several people around me who were watching, and then quickly dispersed, causing everyone to burst into a burst of understanding laughter. After everyone's laughter stopped, Bao Budong approached and asked, Young master, what does Tianlong Temple say? Murong Fulang said in a loud voice, The high monks of Tianlong Temple are kind-hearted and compassionate, and have decided to use the one young finger technique to heal me. I wish I can gather qi and return to my original state, and solve the problem of confusion in my body's true qi. This is a big matter, and the high monks need to discuss for a few days before proceeding with the rescue. Our group and I will be staying in this Tianlong temple for the next few days. Upon hearing this, Bao Butong and others were all taken aback and immediately rejoiced, saying, Congratulations, young master. Congratulations, young master. Murong Fu waved his hand and shook his head, saying, There's nothing to congratulate on. Whether we can get through this calamity this time depends entirely on the mercy of the high dot ranking monks of Tianlong Temple. In the future, we need to remember this virtue, hold our hearts upright, and not let the heart of a petty person consume the belly of a gentleman. Then, he gave a meaningful glance at Bao Fong and his companions. Bao but Ong, the two of them were in a difficult situation due to the turmoil. They quickly bowed and apologized, Young master, you have taught me a lesson. I understand my mistake. Murong Fu shook his head and sighed inwardly. In the evening, in a guest dormitory of Tianlong Temple. Because this is Tianlong Temple, I don't expect such a thing as the black clothed man's assassination to happen again that night. So this time everyone is one person, one room. Feng Bao and his wife insisted on living next door to Murong Fu. Murong Fu knew that the two of them were kind. hearted and didn't say much. Just late at night alone, Murong Fu couldn't help but sigh. The so. called restoration of the country by the Murong family was ultimately just a dream. In the late Western Jin dynasty, during the Five Hu and Sixteen Kingdoms period, how many dynasties changed one after another like lanterns? How many spring and autumn seasons were there during the late Tang and Five Dynasties period? And the Murong family is obsessed with the idea of reviving a Xianbei dynasty that was destroyed over 600 years ago in an era dominated by Han people. Isn't that just a dream? Just ask three words. Why? As the two major officials of the Murong family, Bao Bu and Feng Bo Evil, with their martial arts habits, how could they have the demeanor of Wang's was talent? It's not easy not to offend people. As a Xianbei bloodline and a wealthy family, I had countless pairs of eyes secretly watching. Before coming, I was afraid that when I was not around, my family would ruin the situation, so I humbly approached Mrs. Wang to improve my relationship, hoping that she could take care of Yanzuo when I was not around. Now Murong Fu can understand to some extent why the original owner went crazy. In my past life, although I was not a person of great wealth and wealth, and could even say that I was poor, at least I treated people sincerely and had many close friends around me. Having no home or job, I am at ease and carefree. Nowadays, although heaven and earth are vast, who can I confide in? Thinking of his friends, Murong Fu remembered the drifting that caused him to cross the river, and couldn't help but look at the culprit in his palm that caused him to cross. An ordinary jade pendant. The jade pendant is a common form of jade guanin in previous lives. Coincidentally, guanin bodhisattva is also enshrined in Tianlong Temple. Unfortunately, Morong Fu discovered that the culprit had actually come to this world with him. It's like the setting of the spiritual treasure jade in Dream of the Red Chamber, but unfortunately, 
after observing it repeatedly these days, Morong Fu couldn't see any spiritual connection in this so dot called treasure jade. Alas, Morong Fu hung the jade pendant back around his neck, blew out the oil lamp, and went to sleep. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Reasons for the Individual You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Reasons for the Individual Three Days Later, Inside the Mauni Hall of Tianlong Temple Murong Fu sat cross-legged on a large cattail, with a solemn expression. In the four directions of southeast, northwest, and northwest, there are four high-dot-ranking monks from Tianlong Temple. Jenin, Gunxiang, Benguan, and Ben Ken. These few righteous monks, who usually have a calm demeanor and a calm demeanor, are now sitting upright with a serious expression because they all know that what they need to do next is related to the future of Tianlong Temple and even to the safety and survival of Dali Kingdom. The famous incense in the meditation room has been burned for a while. Originally, the abbot put his hands together and said, Amitba Buddha, three senior brothers and junior brothers, Morong Gongzi, are you ready? Seeing the affirmation in the eyes of San Ben and Morong Fu, Benin let out a loud shout and activated the deep internal power of the Yi Yang finger in his body. Then, he pointed towards Morong Fu's Tanjong acupoint on his chest, and a pure internal power flowed out of Benin's fingertips and into Morong Fu's body along the acupoint. The other three directions, including Gunxiang, Gunguan, and Benshan, were also processed in the same way by the three eminent monks, with one Yang finger technique connected. Point at the Feng Fu acupoint, Zigong acupoint, and the Yin Wei Mai Dahang acupoint in the back of Morong Fu's brain. The Feng Fu acupoint is about one inch away from the hairline and belongs to the Governor Meridian, while the Zigong acupoint belongs to the Ren Meridian. This move aims to use the strength of one young finger to unblock the obstructed Ren and do meridians for Morong Fu, allowing the true qi accumulated in various parts of Morong Fu's body to circulate normally and return to the Dantian. At first, Morong Fu felt a few small snakes crawling into his body, wandering through his meridians. Then, he felt waves of warmth surge up from his limbs and bones, as if soaking in a hot spring on a cold winter day, feeling comfortable throughout his body. The feeling of chest tightness caused by poor qi and blood flow earlier has also been alleviated, just like a big stone that has been pressing on the chest has finally been moved away. Suddenly, my eyes lit up, and my face showed joy. Just as I was about to express my gratitude, my deep voice rang in my ear. Murong Gongzi, rest assured, quickly concentrate your mind, embrace Yuan Shi, and feel the flow of qi and blood in your body. Upon hearing this, Morong Fu quickly closed his eyes and dared not be distracted again. Inside the Mauni Hall, there was a solemn and dignified atmosphere, and within a radius of twenty zhang, the venue had already been cleared in advance. At this moment, even a faint sound of footsteps could not be heard indoors. As time passed, fine beads of sweat appeared on the foreheads of several senior monks, and a faint expression of pain appeared on Morong Fu's face. After about another cup of tea, the four high monks coincidentally withdrew the internal power of one young finger from Morong Fu's body. Morong Fu's body shook and he collapsed on a cushion. The original discomfort is now completely gone, and the previous state of drowsiness is no longer present. Feeling the real changes in his body, Morong Fu was overjoyed. Ignoring the soreness of his hands and feet at this moment, he quickly got up from the cattail and walked to one side of the steps. He solemnly bowed to the four high monks, saying, Thank you very much for the help of the four masters. With such kindness, Morong Fu will definitely remember it in his heart. From now on, Gusu Morong will always remember the kindness of the Duan family in Dali. Upon hearing this, the abbot and his three senior brothers exchanged glances, and they all saw joy in each other's eyes. The four words, Gu Su Mu Rong, hold a significant position in the martial arts world today, and are also passed down as a single lineage. Murong Fu's words can fully represent the attitude of the entire Murong family. Dali is a small country with few people, which has earned the goodwill of the Murong family and strengthened their position in the future. 
Immediately, even the abbot dared not ask for help, so he quickly stood up and saluted, saying, Master Morong, Ji Ren has his own destiny. I and all the senior brothers are just taking advantage of the situation. The so dot called kindness of creation cannot be taken seriously. At present, the conversation was very joyful. Originally, I ordered the rear hall to hold a banquet and invite Murong Fu and his group. At the banquet, there was a double dialect smile, and the guests and hosts enjoyed each other until the evening. At night, Murong Fuxing vigorously padded and jumped in the room. Previously, due to the lack of natural qi, Murong Fu was no different from an ordinary person. Not to mention climbing over eaves and walls, he was gasping for breath by taking several more steps. Now that the true qi is smooth, I immediately followed the martial arts secrets in my memory and tried several sets of body movements and martial arts in the room. Although I practiced them crookedly and without proper organization, I have gradually improved compared to my previous state of relying solely on roaring. Finally, I don't have to worry about being killed by a few small thieves while wandering in the martial arts world. This excitement tossed and turned all night long. The next day at breakfast, Murong Fu went with two big black circles under his eyes, and his comical appearance made Wang Yuyan, Zhu Abi, and other three girls laugh repeatedly. After breakfast, the group discussed the next steps in the temple. Bao Butong suggested that they should immediately head north and return to Yanziwu to prevent leaving for too long and no one taking control inside the Yanziwu. This proposal was rejected by Murong Fu on the spot, and everyone was puzzled. Therefore, Murong Fu told the group about Jilmaji's desire to obtain the Six Meridian Divine Sword Manual. Faced with such a strong enemy, the high dot ranking monks of Tianlong Temple still expend energy to lend a helping hand. How can we leave at this time? Besides, this matter is still caused by our Murong family. In terms of emotions and reason, we should stay and resolve this dispute before leaving. This is one of them. Secondly, if our Murong family wants to establish a foothold in the martial arts world, do not pursue great achievements, make friends with heroes from all over the world, and avoid making grudges with others. The Duan family in Dali is a famous martial arts sect, and with the respect of the country's leader, they will undoubtedly be a great help to the great cause of our Murong family in the future. Murong Fu said. But in this way, won't you offend that Tibetan national teacher Jiomaji? And the great monk came all the way to fulfill the master's last wish. Speaking of which, he can still be considered helping our Murong family. Isn't it not good for us to do this? Azu asked in confusion, and everyone looked at Murong Fu. Azu's words expressed a common doubt in everyone's hearts. Murong Fu smiled slightly and said calmly, Don't worry, everyone. Please calm down and think about it. If Jil Maji really wants to obtain the sword manual of the Six Veins Divine Sword for his father, why didn't his father come to his door when he was alive? Instead, it was only after his father passed away that this headless case was brought up. As soon as the four words, headless case, were spoken, everyone's hearts trembled, and they all looked at Murong Fu thoughtfully, waiting for his next words. At the end of the day, the so dot called, fulfilling my father's wishes is false, and forcibly obtaining the sword spectrum of the, six veins divine sword, is true. That Jamozi comes from the Dakshishan esoteric school, and belongs to the same lineage as Tianlong temple. In addition, his identity as a national teacher of the Tubo kingdom. He he, everyone think about the reason behind this. So, the Tibetan national teacher used this pretext to undermine the reputation of Tianlong Temple, and it was also the name of our Morong family that was borrowed. As a monk, this Jamozi has such a deep scheming, which is so despicable. Azu exclaimed in surprise, and everyone immediately felt a sense of relief upon hearing Azu's words. They all denounced the malicious thoughts of Jamozi and praised Morong Fu for his sharp eyes, which showed Jamozi's malicious intentions. Wang Yuyen and the other three women are particularly beautiful and colorful. Murong Fu looked at everyone, discussing each word with a smile on his face and not speaking, but secretly pondering in his heart. 
In fact, it is true that Jumozi used the reputation of the Morong family to satisfy his personal desires, but this source still lies with Morong Bo. Morong Bo used Jumozi's greed to provoke martial arts disputes, in order to achieve his illusory dream of restoring the country. At this moment, Morong Bo may still be hiding in the Sutra Pavilion of Shaolin Temple and engaging in a secret struggle with Xiao Yuan Shan. However, these cannot be said to everyone. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Before the Great War. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10. Before the Great War time passed quickly. In the blink of an eye, the group had been staying at Tianlong Temple for almost half a month. One day, Morong Fu was accompanying Wang Yuyan under the Bodhi tree outside Tianlong Temple. A small monk from Tianlong Temple hurriedly found Morong Fu. Morong, Morong, Morong. The little monk hurriedly ran all the way, out of breath, and finally found Morong Fu. He didn't have time to be happy. The next moment, the beautiful scenery in front of him made the little monk's ears blush. He quickly turned around, clasped his hands together, and kept reciting words like, Sin, Sin. Morong Fu smiled slightly and stood up casually without paying attention, but Wang Yuyan hid behind Morong Fu and dared not show her head. Morong Fu asked the young monk in a loud voice, What can I do for you, young master? But what can I do for you, master abbot? The little monk didn't dare to turn his head back and said to Morong Fu, Master Abbot, Master Abbot has asked me to invite Master Morong to the Mauni Hall for a talk and discuss important matters. Morong Fu's eyes lit up, and he had already guessed what was going on in his heart. He turned around and gently said to Wang Yuyan, Yuyan, you go back to your room first. My cousin will follow this little master and then go back. Upon hearing these words, Wang Yuyan, as if granted amnesty, quickly agreed, took small steps, lowered her head, and disappeared into Morong Fu's sight like a gust of wind. Morong Fu smiled and didn't say anything, then turned to the little monk and said, Please guide me, little master. Along the way, passing through the pavilion, the little monk led the way, and Morong Fu leisurely followed behind. In fact, Morong Fu was already familiar with the road to Mauni Hall, and asking the little monk to lead the way was out of respect for him. He doesn't think that the other party is just a little novice, so he can underestimate them. What if they have some great opportunities in the future, and suddenly rise to the sky, becoming a peerless expert or a big shot? What else is impossible when you can travel on your own? Therefore, in these days, both the upper and lower levels of Tianlong Temple have shown that the young master Morong treats people with humility and is truly worthy of the title of the prince of a noble family. Who could have guessed that Morong Fu was actually pursuing this plan? In front of the Mauni Hall, Morong Fu thanked the little monk for leading the way and then respectfully bowed a few times before entering the room. Morong Fu has met all the masters. This time, unexpectedly, the monks did not return their prayers as usual, and the Mauni Hall was silent. Although Mauni Hall originally had the meaning of silence and contemplation, such actions are still rare. Morong Fu peeked in and saw that in addition to the four books he had seen before, there were also several unfamiliar faces in the Mauni Hall. In an inconspicuous corner of the hall, an old monk dressed in a tattered robe covered in dust, was bowing his head to the wall, motionless. The whole person feels like a dead wood, and if you don't look carefully, you really can't notice him. Master Kurong The name flashed through Murong Fu's mind like lightning. Master Kurong is a rare Taoist monk in the original work. Although he only made one official appearance, he was repeatedly mentioned by different characters. Duan Yanqing, the former crown prince of Yanqing and now the leader of the four major villains, lost everything in the internal turmoil in Dali. His first thought was to seek justice from Master Kurong at Tianlong Temple, and Emperor Baoding, who was on par with Duan Yanqing's martial arts cultivation, would show great respect to Master Kurong when he met him. Later, the leader of the Xiaoyao sect, Wiyazi, played the Zhenlong chess game and asked for an heir, has Master Kurong arrived? This shows the reputation and martial arts cultivation of Master Kurong. 
the withered and glorious Zen and the Six Meridian Divine Sword, which he participates in, are known as the two greatest treasures of Tianlong Temple. Surprisingly, such characters have also appeared, which shows that Tianlong Temple really values this Six Meridian Divine Sword. Murong Fu secretly thought to himself. He has coveted the sword manual of the Six Meridian Divine Sword in his heart, after all, as a heavenly dragon universe, it is also possible that it is the strongest martial arts in the entire Golden Book series. Saying he is not tempted is purely deceiving himself. When I was a child, I watched Duan Yu on TV, a flower enthusiast, taking gentle steps on the waves and effortlessly emitting the sword energy of the Six Meridian Divine Sword from his hands. Murong Fu only missed Hala Zi. But not to mention that obtaining the sword manual from the hands of the high dot ranking monks in Tianlong Temple without realizing it is a foolish dream. Even if it is obtained, it would be difficult for the original master to perform a Taoist act like Duan Jingchun. He he, only by practicing it can there be ghosts. Why offend Tianlong Temple for nothing? So Murong Fu is quite open dot minded about this matter. In addition to Master Kurong, there is another monk in the Mauni Hall who wears the same robe as Sibin and others. This monk has a peaceful face, a calm expression, and a sense of nobility emanating from all over his body. He must be the disguised Baoding Emperor Duan Jingming. There was also a young master dressed as a Confucian scholar who, as soon as Murong Fu entered, looked at him with a smile on his face. You don't have to think about it, you know it's the chosen son of the heavenly dragon universe, Duan Yu. Thinking of this, Murong Fu always felt strange in his heart, after all, Duan Yu in the original work was Wang Yuyan's loyal licking dog, and in the end, he successfully dug up Murong Fu's wall. Murong Fu came out with Wang Yuyan this time because he was afraid that the backyard would catch fire when he was not around, which would really result in great losses. No way, Taoran will die, pure love warriors are invincible. Murong Fu muttered in his heart. For a long time, several senior monks of the same generation finally noticed Murong Fu. Benin apologized and immediately introduced everyone in the hall to Murong Fu, emphasizing the unknown monk. Junior brother Benchen has a special identity, and I hope you don't speak too much in front of outsiders. Murong Fu replied with a knowing smile. When the Confucian scholar Gongzi arrived, he didn't wait for Ben to introduce him. He quickly climbed up from the cattail and said excitedly to Murong Fu, My name is Duan Yu, Murong Gongzi. I have heard of your name before, but I didn't expect you to be even more handsome and radiant than the legendary one. I am so polite in my room. Before he could finish speaking, he bowed repeatedly in his hands, and Murong Fu quickly replied, I used to be Prince Duan of Xinan, whom I have admired and admired for a long time. When I saw him today, he truly lived up to his reputation. You've heard of my name before, that's great. Duan Yu was overjoyed when he heard Murong Fu say this, and excitedly grabbed Murong Fu's hand. Big brother, I'll be polite to you. You take it seriously, Murong Fu's lips twitched slightly, feeling guilty in his heart. This child is too sincere, isn't he? However, it seems that this person is also quite cute. No, Murong Fu. This is your future rival. What are you doing? You are compromising with the enemy. A voice shouted loudly in Murong Fu's heart. You are, let's talk about it later. I have something important to discuss with young Master Murong today. Just as Murong Fu was at war between heaven and man in his heart, a voice interrupted him. Are you finally coming? Murong Fu thought to himself. End of this chapter